Hi students, coming to the next topic in the subject software engineering was architectural design. So, so far we have discussed about different software architectures and architecture styles and architecture genres. So, now let us see the architectural design. So, how we are designing the architect, uh, any software, whatever the software we have taken, how we are representing in the architectural design. So, the software architectural design let me write the point first the software architectural design represents represents the structure of it represents the structure of data and program components so the software architectural design represents the structure of data and program components that are that are required to build a computer based system so if you want to build any computer based system you need the structure of data and program components that are used in the uh, which are represents the software architectural design so, if you want to design any software architectural, first you need the structure of data and program components that are required to build a computer based system. So, actually why we require this architecture? So, first you have to know that it is not an operational software. The architectural is not a operational software. We already know that. It is not consisting of any code. Okay, so architectural is not a operational software. It is, it is uh, just, it is representation that enables a software engineering. It is representation. It is representation. So it is not an operational software, but it is representation means it is a structure that enables the software engineering to analyze the effectiveness of the design to consider architectural alternatives and to reduce the risk so for all that uh, things the architecture uh, design was introduced so the first thing you have to be noted that architectural design is not an operational software it is just a representation it is just a blueprint it is just a structure okay so whatever the requirements we are taken from the customer so that requirements have to be represented in some structure so that architectural design represents the structure of data and the program components that we are used to build a computer based system so that is a just introduction of architectural design so the architectural design representing the system in let me write that point architectural design representing the system representing the system in context in context that is the system engineer must model the context first the system engineer who is able to uh, develop the system the system engineer must model the context so first he has to model the context next the context diagrams that ha he has to be created so what are the context diagrams the models in which the system interacts the models in which the system interacts with external entities so what are the external entities here the system uh, we are uh, going to develop a model so that uh, whatever the system that we are building that system should interacts with the external entities the external entities like users uh, architectural context diagrams input output user interface processing everything so by taking the um, that external entities the system model that is a context diagram will be developed 
so now let us see the system that interoperates uh, now let us see an architectural design the system that interoperate with the target system or represented as so whatever uh, you want to implement that means if you take any context if you want to implement that context in by using some architectural design you have to follow some uh, concepts that is the system that interoperate with the target system or represented as super ordinate system subordinate system peer level systems and actors so these are the some uh, characters or the stages that are present uh, in any concept in any program so that you are going to be uh, represent by using architectural design so what is a super ordinate system the superordinate system is nothing but it is using the target system as a part of some higher level processing scheme. So, all these uh, systems will interact with the target system. So, the target system is the main system which it gives the output. So, that all these systems will has to interact with the target system. So, whatever the concept you have taken, whatever the requirements you have taken, whatever the product that you are going to be implemented, first you have to think about the target system. So, and next you have to think what are the different systems that are interacting with the target system. So, that you have to be represented everything by using architectural design. So, the different systems that are uh, related to the target system that has to be decided by using superordinate system okay you have taken one product that you are going to be implemented suppose if you want to create in any app so if you want to create a, that app first you have to think about the target what is the target that make it as one system then in that app you have to be decided who is a superordinate system and who is a subordinate system and who is a PR level system and who is the actors here who is it's not a man it is a system okay it is a, a modules just think about it. it's a modules or it is a components the superordinate system uh, is nothing but it is using the target system as a part of some higher level processing scheme and next is a subordinate system the subordinate system is used by the target system to provide data or processing needed to complete the target system okay if the target system want to achieve some output so with the help of the subordinate system the target system can complete its need with the help of data or processing which is provided by the subordinate system next is a peer level system so what is this peer level system will do at the peer level system producing or consuming the information needed by peers and the target system so the peers will need some information means they wants to the peers or nothing but the users okay so those pe uh, those peers wants to produce or to consume the information by them and the, at, at the same way and the target system next is the actors will present the actors are those entities that interact with the target system so this you have to be remember actors are nothing but the entities that interact with the target system by producing or consuming information that uh, that is necessary for requisite and here in this uh, uh, architectural design after if you find after finding out the subordinates superordinates and actors and the peers next is the interfaces must be defined so there should be a communication there should be a relationship between those systems so next you have to find out the interfaces must be defined that is the relationships after, uh, after that all the data that flow into or out of the target system must be identified okay next you have to think about from where to where the data is going means from you have to identify the in, input flow and uh, as well as the output flow so all the data that flow into or out of the target system must be identified so this is a target system so from here the data we uh, from where we are getting the data and from where we are sending the data uh, to which system we are sending the data that has to be identified so this is a process of architectural design so if you want to develop a uh, the, by using architectural design if you want to construct anything if you want to structure the uh, representation you need to first uh, 
first you have to identify the superordinates and the subordinates and the actors and the peers that are present in your system and the target system that is present so after that you have to interface you have to establish a relationship between those systems after that you have to identify the data flow into or out of the target system okay so here you can see this is a target system security function here i am taking a security function that is a cc cameras as an example the target system is a security function is there so to operate anything everything uh, should has to has to interact with the target system first let us think about the superordinate system so in this security function so who are the superordinates the superordinates are nothing but the safe home product and internet based product so these two are the comes under the superordinate system so what i said the superordinates are nothing but they are using the target system as a part of some higher level processing scheme so the safe home product and the internet internet based product are using this target as a higher level processing scheme and next is subordinates so who are the subordinates here the sensors are acting as a subordinates for the target system security function so what do you mean by subordinate system the subordinate system used by the target system to provide data or processing needed to complete the target system so to complete the target system function this sensor will be used so that is a subordinate system now coming to the peers who are the peers here the peers are nothing but the surveillance functions so what this peers what this surveillance function will do here it is producing or consuming the information by peers and the target system next is the actors so who are actors here the control panel and the home owners so these two are comes under the actors so the control panel is used to monitor everything and the homeowners is responsible for giving the sensor so here actors those entities this control panel and the homeowners or those entities that interact with the target system by producing and consuming information that is necessary for request so these are the uh, different systems that are present in one uh, security function that is a target system security function okay so actor uses the target system security function and internet based product and the safe home used by the target system and here this target system uses the surveillance functions at the same way this target system security function will use the sensors also so this is about the architectural design thank you